Heavenly Father, Lord God, I praise you and I thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for the person who is going to watch this video, Lord God, and I just pray that the Holy Spirit will just touch them, Lord God. Father God, lay your hand upon them, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds and over their hearts, Lord God. I pray that, Heavenly Father, you will open up their eyes, Lord God, and open up their spirit, Lord God, and give them discernment, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak into their life today using me, Lord God. I pray that you will open up their heart to receive this message, Lord God, to see what the enemy is doing with your body, Lord God, with the body, with your church, Lord God, that they will see it, Lord God, and they will stand, Lord God, and stand for it no more, will stand no longer, Father God, and come back and fight in prayer, Lord God. Be a mouthpiece, Father God. Allow me to just be your vessel, Lord. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to um, read to you part of this book. And this is the last chapter. And it is very powerful. So anyway, I want to read to you. And I'm just going to like... Um, take a few moments and skip around and talk to you about some things that the Lord brought to me and I want to share with you guys because it's so important especially in today's day the last days so one of our most important strategies is a call for our most fervent praying must be able to stand against all forms of disharmony in our relationships and to battle for oneness among ourselves and all of God's people we owe it to the Lord and we owe it to the and we owe it to one another the gospel we share in common is meant to continue to be shared together both the giving and receiving of grace inspiring each of us to pure living and spiritual fervency to the gospel can shine outward to others through our loving and enriching relationships. Together, we are a mighty force. And Satan knows that. And he is all about division right now. He is about division upon the body. And he comes, and now I'm not reading them, I'm going to skip some, but he comes to destroy our peace. Because when the body of Christ is at peace with God and with ourselves, we are at peace with one another. Because if you are at peace with God and yourself, you should be at peace with one another. And it comes individually. It comes with relationship with God. And I'm going to tell you guys, that I was reading this book and it got good. Oh my gosh, I was it's good. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to read to you real quick. Don't be surprised when Satan thwarts our unity as believers in all kinds of different pairings and places where we interact with fellow Christians. YouTube! Facebook! social media. He'll do it in your local church. He'll stir up a faction who thinks that the pastor is woefully deficient in his preaching or his time management or his leadership style or his bedside manner. He'll create stir over the music. Oh my gosh! Can you... People, people, really, the music. Whether this person you know, sung so many solos, or the daughter sung so many solos, or the someone's wife sung so many solos, or let's talk about the lights. Let's talk about, okay, we are in the year of 2015. We are no longer in singing the hymns, which there's nothing wrong with the hymns that glorifies God, then amen. But as time goes by, music progresses. And different Christian songs are, you know, are taking place. They are, 
being made up, and you know what I'm saying? Um, what's the word? I don't know the word. Anyway, but creating different songs, different melodies, but it all glorifies God and it pleases God. Now, when you're dealing with the youth, the youth, when I say the youth, I'm talking about high school. I'm talking about middle school. I'm talking about the ones right now who the Satan's really going after. He's going after our children within the school systems. And so when you talk about that, you want church to be fun for them, you know. God loves it when we are praising Him. Who cares about what the lights look like? You know, I mean, really, it's not that big of a deal. It's that right there. If you have a problem with what your church's lights look like or whatever, some other churches, that's the vision that Satan is using to cause division between the body of Christ because he doesn't want there to be peace. And I'm so ridiculous. I'm so ridiculous. So let me just continue before I go over there. He'll create stir over how loud they play the music. He'll divide the old, the elders from the young, the old from the young. He'll divide people who are traditional versus modern or, you know, private school kids from public schoolers. Instead of people being able to freely exercise and emphasize their various spiritual gifts for the good of the body, he'll cause folks to see one person's ministry as a direct competitor of another's. I mean, let's talk about Benny Hinn. He is a powerful, anointed man of God who God has used him to heal. That's his gift. That's his spiritual gift. There may be some things people agree with and don't agree with, you know, but that's, we're all entitled to that. But let's not bash someone's ministry. If they are calling, if people, Joel Olsey, for example, you know, I don't know what all is going on with that whole thing, but I heard so many, so many people talk about him and 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 Joyce Meyer. Oh my gosh! Like these people are called by God. They are preaching from the Word of God, and they many lives, souls are being saved. Are we here to judge other people and to criticize them for their ministry? No, we're not. That's not Christ-like at all. And if you find yourself doing that, repent in the name of Jesus. Repent. And so, you see that Satan is attacking the church. And I love this book because it talks about, it gives an example of the way that he does it. He gives an example of an army and then a guard of that army accidentally ends up shooting one of its fellow soldiers. You know what I mean? And the body, the, the body, the army, God's army, those who are believers. And then when they come against each other, when we come against someone else and we try to make them believe in the pre-trib rapture or throw mad scriptures at someone trying to change what you want them to believe. You want them to believe what you believe instead of saying, oh, praise God, you know, I have a brother and sister right now who is a believer of Christ who is going to push out the gospel too. Why do we got to... Why is it that we need to force other people to try to believe what we believe and not just accept if they're a believer in following Christ? God knows. We don't know how they live. But God does. And, 
And so it's it's very, I think the Lord it just really put that on me. When I read this, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I wasn't really going to even make a video today, to be honest with you. And it's funny how whenever I don't want to make a video or don't plan to make a video, the Lord's like, hey, make a video. <laughs> oh, God, it's so good. Uh, so anyway, you know, our YouTube church, our YouTube family, you know, let's not put any, allow Satan to divide us. You know what I mean? Let's not allow that to happen. Let's stand in one, in unity, together, as Christ formed us to be. You know, we are the head and not the tail. We are one in Christ. He is the head and we are the body. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. See, Satan doesn't like it, and he caused division, and he causes other people to cause division between the body. Because when we are one, when we are one in unity, when we are strong together, and we are working and praying together, oh my gosh, there we have power, you guys. We have so much power and fire, and I mean, there is so much in, in the spirit realm. We blow it up. You know what I'm saying? We straight up blow it up. <laughs> oh, Lord, I love I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the Lord. He's amazing. Woo! Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, you guys. Anyway, um, I want to know, those who have this book, are you reading it? Tell me what you think about it. Have you gotten it yet? Did you not get it yet? If you didn't get it yet, you need to get it. It's amazing. This book has opened up my another realm of closeness with God. Like it has put my passion. It has lit my. I can't. I. I don't even know the words to speak it. But I have gotten so close with God, and my prayer life has just like whoosh, you know what I mean? Like, whoosh, I'm, I'm blowing it up. And <laughs> yes, God is amazing. Wow, he's amazing. So anyway, I love you guys. Um, have a beautiful, blessed day in the Lord. All right? So I'm going to share with you some scriptures on what to fight the enemy with concerning peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And that's Colossians 3.15. Pursue the things which make for peace in the building up of one another. That's Romans 14.19. We are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about every wind and doctrine by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. Ephesians 4.14 Let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. Ooh. That's First John 3.18 let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this, not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. Romans 14, 13. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. And that's Galatians 5, 26. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I like that. Hebrews 10:24-25. Behold, 
how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, coming down the beard, even Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edge of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, coming down upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanding, the blessing life forever. And that's Psalm 133, 1 through 3. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And that's Philippians 2, 2, 4. So that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. 1 Corinthians 12:25. The peace of God, preserved by the prayers of God's people, is meant to forge us together in friendship and unite us in mission. And when it does, not only does it cause the people around us to sit up and notice, but it declares the manifold wisdom of God through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavens. Unity among brothers and sisters puts Satan promptly in his place. And that's something that ought to make us eager to be watchful, to be encouraging, and to be merciful, to be unified. All right, thank you for watching. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and I pray that you will apply this video and what you I have shared with, you know, apply it to your lives. And so we can make this church, we can make this body strong and lit and on fire and, you know, do some big things so we can blow it up. <laughs> All right, bye.